was neighborhood people. Most of the families all hung out together and were friends and everyone knew everyone. The children played in the streets and the parents would sit on the stoops and watch the children. The stoop was part of our living space and so was the street, so was the curb. A lot of what happened with just communication happened on the stoops. If somebody's had a, someone had a death in the family, you'd meet on the stoop and make arrangements. If um, somebody was in trouble, everyone would meet on the stoop and talk about ways of how to fix the problems. Read the newspaper, flirted, played mahjong. The women played mahjong on the stoop. Men played cards, pinochle, mostly. Children would just meet on the stoop to decide what they were going to do, where they were going to go, how they were going to play, who they would play with. The kids would be on the sidewalk. The slate sidewalks were excellent for playing various games, like Scully, um, hit the penny. Homework was even done on the stoops in the nice day, in the nice weather. Everything happened on that stoop. Our stoop was everything. And if you came home a little too late and you seen your grandmother or your aunt or somebody on the stoop waiting for you, you know, you're kind of in trouble. <laughs> the stoop was, it was everything. It was your code. It was, <laughs> are you safe? Are you in trouble? Are we staying out late? Are we about to have a barbecue? You know, it, it was everything. I've got two, you know, crazy boys, and, and I need to make sure they're not trying to commit suicide. <laughs> as many eyes on them as possible. And so uh, the, the adage of it takes a village is true in this case just because I know that, um, you know, and this is people sitting on their stoops. This is old ladies who just sit at the window and be like, da, 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 hey, get out of the street, you know? <laughs> it's anybody, you know? And so um, I feel that um, everybody is very invested in the children on the block. It was almost an unspoken rule. If you didn't belong on the stoop or you weren't on the block or you weren't from the neighborhood, if you came on that stoop, you better have a good reason because you either were visiting someone and you would be interrogated. You weren't getting past the front of the stoop to get on the stoop to get into the building without being interrogated if you were a stranger. So safety was very important and nobody penetrated that stoop culture. I didn't realize how I was so affected by the stoops. You could actually climb over them more easily. You can, you can roll over them, you can roll down them. They, they, they really were more uh, uh, easily transformed into uh, a landscape that you would see in a playground. In the summer, when you had the fire hydrants opened, um, you know, and, and the boys, being strong, would take a soda can and open them up on either end, and then they would use the soda can, they'd hold it a certain way, you know, it was a manly boy thing to do, and they would use it to direct the water however they want it to be either a shower or dead on you or whatever. Guys always had a pink Spalding ball, always, bouncing it around. It was like, you know, that's what they did. Stoop ball, you play uh, from your stoop, and you would take the Spalding, which is a pink ball, and you would take it and hit it against the stoop. And what you tried to do was get it where the bottom step met the sidewalk. If you get it right at the crack, it would fly over everyone's head. It was called a killer. I became great at getting the 100 points in stoop ball if you hit right at that point. Because we, while we were kind of waiting, everybody always had um, the pink Spalding ball, and you're always playing stoop ball to like waste some time. Stick ball was down the middle of the street. You used the sewers. Sewer was home plate, sewer was second plate, and various lampposts or cars would be first and third. We would bounce the ball. There was no pitcher. You would throw the ball up in the air or bounce the ball and hit it as it went with a broomstick, a mop, a mop stick, you usually unscrew your mother's mop stick. And that was really what you used to play stickball with. That and the spoiling, it was very simple. You didn't need gloves. Each block, we had our rules and we would argue over them occasionally, especially if your cousin came to visit from Flatbush and you started playing and 
he either had different rules or made them up as he went and told you that in his neighborhood they were different because it was in his favor. We had this one girl, Susie Russo. If I was choosing a game, a ball, stoop ball or stick ball, I took Susie over all the guys all the time. She was that good. If we could play ball all the time, we'd just play ball rather than go out with girls. As you got older, it was too dangerous to go out. When we were very small, we were always out on the stoop and we were always playing outside and there were all kinds of games. As I became a teenager, it was impossible to be out on the stoop. Well, it became extremely violent. And my father never owned the car, so we took subways. We would walk back and forth to Marcy Avenue, get the subway, it was worth your life. At some point, it just became worth your life to walk down to Marcy Avenue and take the train. The violence in the area uh, became immense. One day, someone, a bullet came through the kitchen window, which was at the back of the apartment, and my parents' bedroom window, which was at the front, on the same day, at different times different random shootings. People would get killed on the corner on a Saturday night and lay out there screaming and moaning and nobody would come. No police, no ambulance, no anything. So eventually we had to move. It was a little, the neighborhood had changed drastically. Uh, there were drug dealers all over the place. And then the neighborhood didn't feel as safe as it did when I was a youngster. Many of the uh, Italian and Polish friends by then, by the time I came back, they were gone. There was an exodus, you know, there were very few uh, uh, whites living in the neighborhood, you know, by the time I came out of the service. So the, the whole complexion of the neighborhood changed. Yeah. But it's an interesting dynamic in terms of, it's almost like breathing in and breathing out, you know, that the, the neighborhood has its uh, movement and it's, it's nice to see those kind of neighborhoods that have a resurgence. I'm Kat Greenleaf. I'm the host of Talk Stoop. And we're here in Cobble Hill, Brooklyn on my stoop. This is a very active stoop community. On a nice night, like probably tonight, everyone will be out drinking wine, hanging out. People who don't have stoops tend to hang out with those of us that do and, you know, because there's a place to sit and the kids will uh, swing back and forth on the gate. I like to see everyone's dogs and the babies. The best, the best is when someone has a newborn and they come out and, and like parade the baby down and they, you see them stopping at every stoop. I see mostly kids playing around the stoops in, in this neighborhood and everybody's just kind of running back and forth. And, and sometimes we play hide and seek on, on our stoop. And this kid that has a love a toys that we can play with on the other side. Every time we go across there, they're usually playing dart tag. When somebody tags can... them, uh, they're it. Yeah, and it's basically like tag with like giant blasters. Except what? Except, except what fake guns. Like they know us. All the little kids know us. They come and they oh, want yeah. us to come and sit with us and tell their mother, come and get us later. Yeah. <laughs> they go running up and down. The uh, case here. So it keeps you going. Oh, there weren't any children on the block for a long time. Then we had the baby boom. And now, and now we have all, we have all tons our little of kids. children on the block. There's a certain sophistication that comes out of children born in New York City. The children in the city grow up being very knowing and very mature and very aware. And they are exposed to a lot more in terms of experiences, in terms of lifestyles, in terms of culture. It's not limited. It was just a wonderful way of growing up as a kid. And it, it made you want more in life. I think it molded you to want more out of life. But if you could, you would always stay in your neighborhood. New York is a special place. You know, it's, it's really a special place. But it's, it's actually, it's the place where we grew up. So. That makes it special right there, but, you know, we got generations down here. This is New York City, you know, three blocks away is another world. So, so this world, we just want to keep and maintain the really strong aspects of it. Our neighbors break down fences between backyards. There's a whole set of neighbors across the street that don't have any fences. And so all the kids run around in the backyards and there's four or five backyards open, you know, and, um, 
you know, that doesn't happen by accident. And then there's like a huge aspect of personal pride. And this is not about class or anything else. Like these people have been taking care of their stuff. It didn't matter if they're rich or poor, they've been taking care of what's theirs for a long time. And that, you know, every morning you will see just like now, bunch of little old lady and old men up there sweeping up their stuff you know what I mean? and that personal pride is always a beautiful thing to me there's so many different cultures who are very accustomed to sitting out in front of their homes doing whatever it is and uh, those cultures to me translate seamlessly into that New York stoop culture most of the children that I grew up with had a sense of belonging because of that and in the city where, you know, it could be a big, scary city, having a sense of where you belong and a sense of where you feel comfortable and everyone knows your name, having a place where you could feel comfortable, safe, secure, and known is the stoop.